Let me paint a picture for you. All right, players come out on stage, they shake hands, and they go to their stations and begin setting up. Uh-oh, we got a delay and the match can't start because something isn't right. And you see, it's so important that a player setup is the perfect environment or it could cost them the game. When people get started, they will often run with the default setup or let some software choose what's optimal, but StarCraft II is over 10 years old and pro players have done a lot of the work and they know what a good setup looks like. Pros aim to get the best performance while keeping distractions to a minimum, so there's no reason not to take advantage of that. And that's what we're gonna do today, champ. Let's talk about getting you your own pro setup. Let's talk about outside of the game first. Starting with keyboards. You're gonna want a mechanical 10 keyless keyboard. 10 keyless gives you a lot more room to move your mouse and it's easier to pack when traveling. Korean pro players plus special and Scarlet use keyboards from Leopold. Right now, everyone's rocking the Leopold FC 750. It has sturdier keycaps and the enthusiast features right out of the box, but its rival, the Philco Magic Touch 2, has also made an appearance in the Korean scene over the years. Okay. Mice, optical, anything else you're just begging for a harder life. Many top pros own a Logitech G Pro. In the past, wired was your only choice, but Serral can be seen using the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite Wireless. I announce to you that the technology is here and it's Logitech, a wireless mouse that's not only lightweight, but matches the latency of a wired mouse. Monitors naturally vary across this pro spectrum, but there are some key specs that are consistent. Pros often use monitors that are similar in size and refresh rate to the ones that they'll be using on the big stages. We're looking at a 24 inch with nothing less than 144 hertz with some sporting a 240 hertz monitor. So hertz is the measure of the refresh rate referring to how many times per second the display is able to draw a new image. The monitor that you're likely to see on the pros desk in the making of this video is either the LG Ultra Gear 24GL600F used by GSL or the BenQ Zowie XL 2540 used by ESL. Remember, to be able to hit that high refresh rate, your system needs to be outputting enough FPS. Audio equipment is so understated in StarCraft 2 because it's not a team game, but it's still important to hear directions of game effect sounds. So, get this. On stage, pro players need to wear headphones provided by the organizer and it pumps white noise so they don't hear commentators or live crowds. So that means to hear the sound they've got to use wired earbuds and noise cancelling to drown out the white noise being pumped at them. Now, for example, Scarlet uses a Bose QC20 and Zest uses a Razer Hammerhead. Taking a look at the computer settings, there are some common pro player settings you need. Super important for Zerg players, but all races can benefit is your keyboard repeat delay and repeat rate. Repeat delay being the time difference between when you hold a key down and before it starts repeating. Repeat rate is how quickly that letter repeats once it starts. In Windows 10, you hit your Windows button, type regedit, click registry editor, click H key current user, control panel, accessibility, click on keyboard response, double click on flags, and change the value data to 59. This allows you to edit the other values. Now the rest of these other values are all measured in milliseconds. Set delay before acceptance to zero. Set bounce time to zero, if it's not already set there. You will then set the repeat delay and the repeat rate to your preference. Between 200 and 150 to start to get used to it and then lower it as you can handle it. And then set your auto repeat to six to start. For these to take effect, you need to log off and then log back on. This is a warning though. It is advised to test and tweak till you get it to your ideal level. And typing with this can be very difficult if set too low. If you want to reset this, just change the flag back to 126 and restart. On to the mouse. Now on control panel, select mouse. So let's turn off enhanced pointer precision because this lets Windows taste control of your mouse acceleration and move the pointer speed position to the 611. We did a video on DPI and sensitivity that's a lot more in depth and goes into the hows and whys, but for now, let's go into StarCraft. If you've ever seen a player's point of view during a tournament, you might have noticed the game doesn't look as nice as it possibly could be. 
Really, they must have a PC that could run the game at max settings, right? Well, they do. But in the earlier days, reducing your settings was all about getting max frame rates and reducing the possibility of lag game spikes. But an advantage that has stuck around is getting rid of unnecessary distraction. And that's what we're going to do here. Many of the in-game settings can be set to personal preference, but here we'll focus on only the things that you need to change from the default needed for competitive play. If I don't mention it, you probably don't need to touch it. So starting with graphics. Remember the goal here is to maximize FPS without putting yourself at a disadvantage in gameplay. Vertical Sync locks your monitor's frame rate to the frame rate of your GPU in order to eliminate screen tearing. This option comes at the cost of your game's FPS. If you don't need it, don't turn it on. The graphics section affects how certain units and effects appear on screen, making certain units and effects easier to identify. So just set graphics to medium. Many choices here will be set correctly with some exceptions. Set shaders to medium or high. High lets you see better units while they're warping in. Set texture quality to either medium or high. Units portraits to 2D. Set physics to off. Set post processing to low. All right, here in the sound, very few things to check off, but let's turn off the ambient sounds. No need for the extra distractions. Playing the background can be useful because if you alt tab, you want to hear if the game has started. On to mouse and keyboard. You want to make sure you have it set to 51 to eliminate any pixel skipping or frame drops. You want to have the Windows key disabled. This will prevent you from knocking yourself out of the game by accident. Here for drag scroll speed, you want to have it set anywhere between 50 to 79. 69 being a good spot to start and test with. Mouse scroll speed and keyboard scroll speed. Many pros will set this around 69, but some pros like Serral and Mario will set it to around 15 to 30 to make their mouse drag scroll a lot smoother. Mouse scroll is the edge of the screen. Yeah. Why do you have that so low? That feels weird um, that that's so low. I noticed Serral and Mario actually do the same thing where they have it super low because the only time in theory I want to be using it with my setup, using drag scroll all the time, yeah. is if I'm stutter stepping. Because that's, that's the one thing that's awkward with drag scroll is if you're like, ah. you know? So it doesn't really matter. It actually feels quite nice if it's really low. It's really smooth to like, you know, do something like this. Here in the gameplay section, show alerts is enabled. Enable simple command card is disabled. And enemy unit selection is enabled. Now, show unit life bar, set it to always or damaged. Control group, unclickable. Show flyer help, always. Here in the social section, you want to make sure auto join party mode chat is disabled and set status to busy when playing a game, which is very useful if you're playing in a tournament. Hotkeys can vary among pro players with many pros opting to use the standard hotkeys and customizing their key buttons. The key principle here is to move your keys to the left hand side and select keys that don't have you moving around your hand too much. It's more <laughs> something that I did over time because I've been playing for so long now. Yeah. It's just Every time I want to adjust something, I do it, and it's over nine years. I've got what I like now. That's very interesting. What did you start with? I just started hotkeys? with standard. Yeah. Like and grid or just complete standard? Just complete standard. Okay. And then the first thing I did was pretty early on when I was learning StarCraft, I moved all the hotkeys from like M, like movement speed for Zerglings, and melee attack on the Evo chamber. I just moved those to something on the left side of the keyboard because mm -hmm. that's one of the main things with, key with uh, hotkeys is that you don't want to be moving your hand too much. Yeah. Lastly, on hotkeys, you'll want to set up rapid fires. This allows you to take advantage of your keyboard's repeat rate to use abilities, build units, and build buildings in rapid succession. To that, you want to create a profile, give it a name, click Global, Unit Management, click Choose Ability or AI Target, click Add Alternate, and choose a key to add the ability to use for your hotkeys. Since you can only add one from this menu, you'll need to add others manually. To do it manually, you have to locate your hotkey file inside your StarCraft 2 folder, open it with Notepad, and edit. Under the hotkeys, you'll see Target Choose. At the end of it, add a comma and add other capital letters that correspond with the abilities. Buildings or units that you want to have rapid fire separated by commas. Save and then restart StarCraft. All right, that's it. In the end, you're going to have to put your own spin on your setup and customize it to yourself as a player. But after what we just went through, you should at least have the baseline from where you want to take your pro setup. So, good luck.
and have fun. ES Champ Guides and Builds is brought to you by passionate viewers just like you. To help us level up the scene, go to eschamp.com join to become a member and get access to the community, previews, and exclusive shows.